So about three years ago, I noticed the front of these uh, Model T fenders sticking to the side of this hill at an old car dump site here, old car wreck site. And I knew they were Model T because of the shape of the bill and the, uh, the bead there. <clears throat> so I cleared away some of the brush and I found this, which I didn't recognize. And I didn't recognize it because it's some sort of frame extension that serves as some sort of bumper, I guess. And it mounts, well, here's the remnants of a signal light, the kind you used to find on trucks, front fenders on trucks in the 40s and 50s. So it's kind of interesting that that's there because it's, uh, it makes clear that this old Model T was in service for a long time right into a period where it needed signal lights to be legal. Now, uh, with the truck light, I was starting to think Model T truck. And then I noticed these fenders had this uh, front flange here. That was a change that took place, I think, in late 23, but it makes it a 24 fender at least, if not a 25. And so I started digging just about oh, 10 days ago and I got the bent cross member on the front. No surprise there. Then I found a loose firewall sitting here amongst a bunch of other car parts that were here. And it was the high cowl firewall. So that made this almost certainly a 24 as long as that firewall belonged to it. So, thinking about all this, I started digging a little further, and then I found this, which I didn't recognize. And I have Model T frames, but I didn't know that part, that cross member. But I got a little further, the end of the front fenders, where the running board brackets are, noticed them, and noticed how the frame was heavier and widened out became more substantial I knew for sure that I had a Model TT truck stuck into the side of this hill. So I knew I had a lot more digging because for those of you who know a TT frame is a good two feet longer than an ordinary Model T frame. And I was uh, intimidated by this to begin with to get that far to get the frame up into the tunnel here. So I worked at it, I dug most of it in the last couple of days and I'm now 123 inches, which is the wheelbase, to the back cross member. I can see the back cross member. It has no spring, therefore no axle. And there's also no spring here, even though you can see this, they're broke off. <clears throat> so it makes my job easier, even though it would have been nice to have those parts if they were salvaged. Speaking of which, the only things that are really worthwhile here, salvageable, is I'm hoping the frame, it seems in pretty good shape. There's a slight a slight twist to that rail but uh, otherwise it's solid compared to all the tin that's sitting around here everything is rotten there's some passenger side body that's attached to the uh, passenger side frame rail but it's just remnants I know you can't quite see it on the video it's not worth looking at uh, there was a windshield frame part of which is salvageable. The fender irons uh, that are riveted in there might be salvageable. You can see one here more clearly. Now, I 
am, you know, 123 inches is basically a little more than 10 feet. That shovel is almost 5 feet. So, this here, this Model T business, inside of a hill, do not try this at home. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to use the chain hoist and try and pull and wiggle it. The wings on the back frame should have enough room to come out through this hole. I'm not pulling it quite straight, so we'll see. Uh, so I'll give you another video to see how I get along. But uh, it's been fun. Thanks for watching. Bye now.